creating 3D models sometimes feels like a black magic. I wish there was a way to utilize all of the amazing 3D tools using all of the great 2D assets I have access to. Well, it turns out it's not only possible, but also pretty popular. And most importantly, pretty easy. Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. I hope you missed me at least half as much as I missed you. Today I would like to show you my way of setting up your game so it has a cult of the lamp or don't starve like camera. I start by creating sprites folder. Then I import into it two assets, grass texture and collection of my props. I change their texture type from default to sprite. Then, because all the art has a pixel art-like style with low resolution, I change the filter mode to point. Then, I click apply to save the changes. Then, because the grass file contains only one asset, we can change its sprite mode to single. And because our sprite is a simple square occupying all of its pixels, we can change the mesh type to full rect. For the props assets, we'll need access to the sprite editor. As I am using 3D URP template, the 2D package is not installed. In Unity 2023, however, I can install it simply by pressing this beautiful button. If you are using older version, you can still install the package the regular way, by going to Window, Package Manager. Then, in the sprite editor, I use the automatic slicing, which unfortunately leaves me with those small, ugly artifacts. Those appear just because I haven't cleaned my file properly, but that won't cause us any problems. So I simply select them one by one and press delete button to remove them. Then, for each prop, I adjust its pivot point. It's important for sorting and animation. Now I apply the changes and close the window. Now let's drag and drop the grass into the scene. Fantastic! Let's adjust its rotation and then use a little bit of the sprite renderer's magic. Let's change the draw mode to tiled. As the option name suggests, it will automatically tile for us the grass when we adjust the width and height. Fantastic! It looks like the sprite renderer works great not only in 2D but also in 3D. Well, there is a little problem though. Let's just smash in a random cube into our beautiful, yet a little bit empty level. Then let's play a little bit with the directional light we have there. As you see, our beautiful grass doesn't respond to any light changes. Quiz time! Why is our sprite renderer not responding to light? A. The sprite renderer is not compatible with the 3D project. B. We are using by default wrong shader, which doesn't respond to light. C. Our object is upside down. And D. We need to adjust our URP settings. And the correct answer is B. Sprite default material uses a shader which doesn't respond to light. We could simply create another material using the lead shader. Unfortunately, I found out that this causes a little bit of problems. Let's instead create our own simple shader. I start by creating a new folder and call it shaders. Then I create a simple lead shader graph. I'm going to call it shadow lead. After opening it, we have to adjust few settings. Nothing crazy. First, we change the workflow mode to specular, then the surface type to transparent. Because I'm going to use our shader not only for the grass but also for the props, I'm going to change the render face to both. And lastly I enable the alpha clipping. Now I'm adding a new property of type to the texture. Because I wanted to use the texture used by the game's object renderer, I'm going to call it main text. Now I drag it into the shader graph. Because we cannot connect it directly to the output, I'm adding one more node. It's called Sample Texture 2D. First, I'm going to connect to it our texture parameter. And then I'm going to use its RGBA value for the shader's base color. Then I'm going to use the texture's alpha as the shader's alpha. 
Because I don't want my materials to look smooth, I'm going to decrease the smoothness to zero. And finally, I simply save the asset. To create a material that uses that shader, I simply click on it with right mouse button. Then I go to create material. Now I simply drag and drop our new material onto our grass object. And as you can see, it straight away started to react to the light. Let's now have a look at the props. I'm going to drop one of the trees into the scene. Now, there's something very interesting going on. The objects are drawn as a whole after or before other sprites rather than getting embedded in them. Because none of my objects are going to cross each other, it's not really going to cause me any problems. But I can imagine it being a little bit frustrating for some people. So if you find a way to fix it, please let me know. Because all of my props are going to be above the grass, I am simply adjusting their sorting order. Of course, alternatively, I could change the grass to be in the background layer, or something like that. Now, because I want my tree to respond to light, I simply drag our material onto it. Fantastic! Would be great to have a little bit of shadows. And for that, I'm going to use a simple trick I learned from the tarot dev. To see the shadow settings, we need to change the inspector mode from normal to debug. Then we change the cast shadows to on and check the checkbox next to receive shadows. Now let's adjust our camera. First, I adjust its rotation in X axis to 30. Then I'm moving it a little bit higher. To be fair, the rest depends on your game. You may want to go with the orthographic projection, Or like me, keep a little bit of perspective. The most important setting here will be the field of view. Values smaller than the default will give you fish eye like effect. And higher values will make the perspective a little bit flatter. For values very, very high, there will be almost no difference between the orthographic projection and the perspective one. When I'm happy with my camera settings, I turn my tree into the prefab. Then to create other props, I simply reuse the prefab, change the underlying sprite and save it as a prefab variant. And of course now I'm going to make a small level mockup. Depending on the feeling you want to get, you can adjust the lighting. By using the color filter and intensity, you can make the scene feel a little bit warmer, or of course cooler. You can make it night-like or sunset-like. Then I'm using a little bit of post-processing to add contrast to the level. I use for that the color curves and color adjustment. Then I always like to add the tone mapping and a little bit of vignette. Fantastic! Everything's ready. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Have a fantastic day. Love you and bye bye.